Hello everyone. Greetings of the day. I am Dr. Disha Vidyarthi from IIT College of Science and Technology, Assistant Professor of English Language and Professional Communication in the Department of BSc Computer Science. So yes, I welcome all my learners, all the students and English communication skill enthusiasts to this session, which is based on types, techniques, methods of cohesive paragraph writing. So let us now begin today's session. So before we start to understand the types, techniques, and another uh, characteristics of paragraph writing, let us now first understand what is a paragraph all about, the definition of what is a paragraph. Well, a paragraph is a distinct section of a piece of writing that presents a single idea or topic. It consists of group of related sentences that develop and support the main idea. So students, you can see the paragraph is having a distinctive feature that because it evolves around one central theme, it has to have one main idea. Without a central theme, you cannot write or evolve or weave your words for writing one effective or good paragraph. So it has to have one central theme or the main idea in that piece of writing. So well now what is the purpose of paragraph? See students in uh, today's uh, professional life uh, or if we want to evolve our writing skills, creative skills, we need to understand that paragraphs are those uh, section of any written text which creates a clear demarc demarcation uh, in a lengthier uh, text or pieces, if you can see in your chapters, any kind of lengthy piece, any kind of uh, reports, any kinds of documents, they are different paragraphs. And each and every paragraph has its own specific idea or the thought process. That is why when you change the paragraph, you by default change the thought of line in that paragraph. So let us now understand what is the purpose of paragraph. First, Paragraphs help organize and structure written communication. Yes, surely they give a perfect structure because uh, suppose if you have written a one lengthy piece and there are no border lines, there are no demarcation, there are no change of paragraph, it will be a boring and a lengthy piece and the reader will get confused. Why? Because there is no thought line. They won't be able to find a thought line when you, because when you write the text, a longer text in the chunks of paragraph, there's a clear understanding in the minds of reader when they go through the text. Uh, second, they make text more readable. Yes, they make text more readable by breaking it into manageable chunks. So yes, because paragraph are having a main central theme and the main idea in that shorter piece of writing. So give uh, they give a more clarity and they give a more uh, exclusive readability to the readers because uh, they are in a form of understanding. They create understanding uh, between the text and the reader. And third, each paragraph should convey a clear point or contribute to the overall message of the text. See, they has to be have, uh, having, uh, the text must be having one central theme around which you'll be writing whole of the text, dividing into uh, different segments, dividing into different paragraphs. So uh, never uh, forgot that each and every paragraph should be containing one thought of line because it gives a clear trail to your lengthier text. So paragraphs gives, uh, in short, the purpose of paragraphs is that, that it gives a uh, more readability and clarity to the reader because it is easier to understand when you divide your text into paragraphs and each paragraph carries one main idea or the theme. Moving on to the next segment. Now, the structure of a paragraph. It is very, very important to understand before you uh, start writing a paragraph or uh, start writing any piece uh, because it is uh, very, very mandatory to understand what should be the structure of it because uh, without understanding the structure, you cannot apply those effective writing skills. So starting with under the segment of a structure of a paragraph, number one or the basic is the topic sentence. Without the main theme, as we discussed in the previous slide, the opening of uh, this, uh, this session on the paragraph writing, the topic sentence is a must in any kind of paragraph because it introduces the main idea and what is the central theme of the paragraph. So topic sentence are the uh, number one category uh, of that uh, a section that you have to introduce the topic in the topic sentence when you start writing a paragraph because it gives the clarity to the reader what they are going to read or what they are going to understand or grasp from them from that piece of text. Second is supporting sentences. 
so after you have introduced the central theme after you have introduced your topic now the second point of the structure comes supporting sentences now it is the responsibility of the writer when you have introduced the uh, theme or the idea of that uh, paragraph you have to evolve it you have to increase it in a proper structured manner in step wise manner you have to provide the examples you have to provide a description explanation so that the readers can relate whole of the text with the central theme or the topic statement of your paragraph last but not the least there comes the need of concluding sentence the classic example uh, to understand this structure will be a, will be an essay in all our lives uh, in our student lives or all of the students out there you must have written essay at some point of the time in your student life how do you write an essay first you introduce uh, one topic of that essay the topic statement of that essay then you give the elaboration explanation by using certain examples by quoting different kinds of instances and then in the last segment of your essay you provide the concluding sentences or the statements which have given a proper gist of that essay so in the structure of a paragraph you have to keep in mind that the number one should be topic sentence second should be the supporting sentences and the third portion and the last portion should be the concluding sentences now moving ahead we have types of paragraphs so apart from the structure uh, if we focus on the types of paragraphs number one is descriptive paragraphs as the name itself suggests descriptive paragraphs are those paragraphs which paint a vivid picture of the sensory with the sensory details how these kinds of uh, description you may uh, find in the creative piece of writing like in poetry sections or the people writing sometimes uh, non fiction or sometimes writing fiction they give lot of elaboration and it creates a relation to the readers mind and they start imagining because it suits to the sensory details of, and it suits to the sensory elements of the reader because those descriptions create certain kind of imagination in the reader's mind because, so descriptive paragraphs are very very elaborated using lots of example which ignites the sensory organs of the readers now second is narrative paragraphs narrative paragraphs are those paragraphs which tells uh, they tell a story or the recounts of even in the sequence how they have happened so these kinds of paragraphs you may find in the short stories or small chunks and pieces where uh, life instances are uh, elaborated or sometimes in novels because narrative means what narration and when you narrate you have sequence of events which you want to imbibe them or tell them in the form of a story so narrative paragraphs are those paragraphs they are form in a short story or where the writer is explaining the happenings or the events then comes expository paragraphs expository paragraphs are those kinds of paragraph which explain a concept process or idea these can be uh, one of the uh, segments under the non fiction if you have uh, read lot many of uh, non fiction texts uh, based on certain philosophical thoughts certain ideas certain technical elements or those kinds of uh, fields or the topics you may find that the writer explains lots of concepts and ideas with a process with lots of examples they finally uh, they explain a concept in a very very different manner and these kinds of paragraph may vary as per the uh, mental concept as per the understanding of the writer because it uh, adds the subjective element okay so why because writer is having his own mind his own style his or her own style so it uh, gives a uh, peculiar play to the paragraph now a uh, fourth one is persuasive paragraphs as the name itself suggests persuasive paragraphs are those paragraphs in which writer has written some piece of uh, text where he or she wants to persuade or convince the reader about a certain theme or the topic and this is one of the uh, here we can have one of the classic examples of any kind of subjective piece of writing because here writer is taking the liberty of uh, expressing his or her own personal views and through that he or she wants to convince the reader now moving on to the next segment now there are some uh, techniques some key features which we need to understand if we are uh, trying to write some good effective constructive piece under the segment of paragraph or any kind of piece uh, like text we are writing we need to understand there are key techniques and key features which uh, need to be there when we start write 
when we start writing or when we start to write. Number one is unity. So let us see what is unity. Ensure that all the sentences in a paragraph are closely related to the main idea expressed in the topic sentence. Avoid of topic in, uh, information that can confuse the reader. So unity is one of the basic or you can say very, very mandatory feature in any kind of paragraph writing. If you, being a writer, if you're getting deviated from your topic, if you are deviating from the topic sentence, eventually the reader will get confused because uh, by default you will be repetitive because you have lost the ground. Okay, so you have to maintain the unity of thought through the sentence structure, through uh, the words you are using, through the vocabulary you are using, through how you are presenting that whole idea. So always remember that you have to follow this key feature or the technique that is unity. You have to maintain the unity till the end by the time you are concluding your paragraph. The second one is coherence. Now, what is coherence? Uh, use transitional words and phrases to create a smooth flow between sentences. See, uh, like if you use lot many connectors when you are drafting your sentences, a longer sentences using lot of connectors, it interrupts the flow. So how you can achieve the quality of coherence in your piece of writing? You have to be uh, a logical thinker. You have to evolve your paragraph systematically. You have to follow the rule of precise and concise writing so that you can refrain from using lot many words you can uh, refrain from uh, you know um, maintaining or writing lot many lengthier sentences and eventually the reader will get confused and there will be a very uh, low readability okay so if you want the maximum outcome of your piece uh, of writing which you have written you have to maintain coherence so avoid using longer sentences avoid using lot many connectors because it will minimize the readability and clarity in the reader's mind Third one, supporting details. If you have introduced any topic statement, if you have introduced in the opening segment of your paragraph, the main idea or the central theme, always remember you have to elaborate uh, by giving a certain examples or uh, the proofs in the form of other statements because uh, nobody is going to accept your writing if you are not providing a certain base or certain proof to your central idea or the theme of that paragraph. So always remember you have to provide certain supporting statements and supporting description and detail which will give a depth to your writing. Now, fourth one is conciseness. This is one of the, uh, you can say, basing skills in totality of a good uh, written communication. Conciseness is that feature which... Uh, you know, uh, saves you from being a very uh, confusing writer, being a, or when you are writing, you can refrain uh, yourself from being very, very repetitive or being very monotonous in your writing. If you'll be concise and precise in your writing and sticking to the central idea, your readability will be always high and you will always using, uh, using clear expression. So be concise and avoid unnecessary repetition of wordiness. Wordiness is mean using too many words, sometimes too many difficult vocabulary. Because uh, whenever you write, you need to understand that you are writing that so that your reader can understand what you have written. So if you'll be going over the board using a lot many difficult uh, 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 words and using lot many vocabulary, using lot many words, it will confuse your reader. You, so use clear and concise language to convey your message effectively. Now, revision and proofreading. This is one mandatory feature of any writing piece. If you are writing even a one-line text or even for your email, even for your WhatsApp, never forget to proofread your written piece. Always, you guys, always go through your paragraph, always go through your written uh, content, which you have written, which you have provided to the reader. Before uh, the final thing, you have to read it out. Always check the grammar, always check the spelling, always check the structure. Because in proofreading, when you read your own text as a writer, you get to know that maybe you have missed out certain things. Maybe you have gone over the board using a lot many difficult vocabulary. So you can rewrite it, you can edit it, you can omit it. So the last segment is very, very necessary. Before submitting any kind of uh, final dra draft of your written piece, you need to have the revision and always proofread your text. So now what are the methods of paragraph writing? So there can be uh, four or five uh, basic methods in which you can uh, evolve or uh, you can describe your uh, effective paragraph writing. See, 
before we start the methods of paragraph writing, I would like to tell my students that in paragraph writing, because it depends on the writer as well, so it is a, sometimes it is a very subjective choice, but whether it is subjective or objective, you need to understand there can be four or five methods uh, under uh, which we can start writing our paragraph for more clarity and readability from the uh, aspect of a reader. So number one is inductive order. Now let us see what is inductive order. In this, in this inductive uh, order, uh, it is the logical organization, specific details, examples and illustrations come first. They are followed by the general statement. So you see, the logical organization is there, the specific details, the main theme is introduced first and then they are followed by the generic statement and the generic description. So like inductive order means in increasing order. First you've introduced the topic and then you are increasing toward a generic statement and explaining it. And the just opposite of the induct uh, inductive order is deductive order. It has come or the derived from decreasing order. Now see, in deductive order, the logical pattern involves the process of moving from general statement premise to the principle or the law to the specific detail. So it is just opposes, uh, opposite the inductive uh, order of paragraph writing. Here you will first move from the general statement and in the last you will come to the main idea or the central theme of your paragraph. Now the next one is interrupted method. Now, interrupted method is one of, uh, you can say, uh, a novel technique, and this is also followed while in our oral communication also. Now, what is interrupted uh, method in totality, if you want to understand, sometimes we start explaining anything, be it in written form, be it in oral form, we start with one idea, and eventually, or by default, while in the process of explaining, we have moved or dived into another Theme, which is connected to the previous one, but leaving the main topic, we are, uh, we have little, uh, like we, I would not say that we get deviated, but in the process of explaining, you shift to the different topic yet connected to the previous one. So interrupted method is whenever the writer gives a break to the line of thought. Why? Because you are explaining something. So when you give a, a break to the line of thought and give a turn to the idea to produce the desired effect, what happens, uh, you can understand with the example, like if you attend any lecture of your mentor, of your teacher, or any kind of subject expert, while in the process of explaining any kind of main uh, theme of that lecture, uh, your instructor or your teacher takes the liberty of explaining that thing by connecting, to, uh, by connecting all the students or the learners to the another examples. Why? Because he or she wants to make it more effective in the process of making you understand the whole idea. Same goes in the written piece as well. Now, linear method. Linear method is a logical order refers to a systematic order as line. As the name itself suggests, it ha has to be in a line. It is very, very systematic. One after the another, one after the other. This is the sequence like as arrows goes on, as the lines go on. It is a very systematic development of thought in one line. The thought line has to be on a very, very same level and same pace. And last is chronological organization. In this uh, the writer develops the paragraph in uh, the sequence of the time in which the events have occurred or taken place in history. Uh, these uh, kinds of paragraph writing, you find these are very, very common because in the history piece of writing, uh, we uh, explain a lot of events and occurrences as the happenings, as they have taken place in the time or any kind of year or any kind of a specific time. So chronological uh, organization of any kind of paragraph writing, it is like sequencing in the frame of time. So they are in a chronology. Moving on to the next segment. Now, what are the characteristics of a good paragraph? Yes, this is a very, very must thing. Uh, all of you must be understanding before you try your hand on, uh, before writing any kind of piece. So number one is one controlling idea. Always make it clear in your head before you start to write on any kind of idea, any kind of central theme, any kind of to topic. Always stick to the main central idea because if you get deviated by default, naturally your reader will get deviated and it will be a confusing piece of any written text. So always stick, maintain the unity, always stick to the one central theme and the controlling idea. Second, controlling idea should be fully developed. Yes, 
you should not be writing in tidbit loose ends. It means like you have introduced the statement, you have introduced the topic, but you have not elaborated it well. You have not uh, given the substantial uh, proofs of elaboration by using different supportive statements. So develop your thought fully so that it can be ended well. Because if you will not develop in the initial segment of your paragraph, how will you frame the conclusion? So always remember it is like the staircase. You have to develop it in a sequence. Now, third point is uh, of the characteristic that is cohesive. Use connectors. Yes. Never write any kind of written piece in, the, in such confusing form where you have missed out connectors. Because if you have not used uh, suitable connectors, I would like to mention don't you first don't use too many connectors and if you are using any kind of connectors they should be very very well thought of so that because it cannot uh, so that it should not stop the flow the smooth flow of your writing so use connectors and well thought of thoughts and connect them properly now next is the topic sentence and the rest of the paragraph should match yes suppose early you have started writing in any kind of like uh, one basic is honesty is the best policy. You have introduced this topic in your opening statement and then you somehow deviated from the thought. While in the process of explaining, you introduce some different examples which are not related to the central theme. So always remember if you are, if you have introduced a topic sentence, you, the rest of the paragraph should match to the topic. The topic is different and the paragraph content is different. It is a big, big no in effective paragraph writing. Now, next is no irrelevant information. See, this is all a chain of characteristics. If you will stick to the topic sentence, if you'll stick to the central theme, if you will applying the rule of uh, controlling uh, your paragraph uh, under the segment of one idea, you will be always refraining from using irrelevant information because if you'll deviate a lot by default, you'll be introducing a lot of words, a lot of thoughts and statements which will be irrelevant. So do not... Uh, put or try to um, uh, include any kind of irrelevant information which is not matching to your central theme of the paragraph. Now, next is there can be a concluding sentence. Yes, it is very, very must as in the initial segment of this lecture, we have studied in under the structure of paragraph that uh, there are uh, three points were there opening and the midsection where you provide the supporting sentences and the last is concluding sentence because it will not conclude your paragraph. It will not give a proper structure to your paragraph writing. Like in meal, we have um, starters and then main course and then dessert. So you have concluded whole of your meal. In the same way, when you write any piece, you have to start with the topic statement, sentence, the central theme, and then the uh, main body of your content, you will elaborate. And the last segment will be that you have to conclude well your paragraph. No repetition. The next characteristics which you must be following for a good or the effective uh, um, writing in a paragraph or any lengthier piece, uh, no repetition. Avoid using lot many words, a lot uh, repetitive word. Don't be repetitive in thoughts as well. Like if you have explained one thought in the previous line and then after two, three lines, again, you are explaining uh, those things. It will be repetitive on, on two bases, repetition of word and repetition of thought. So avoid being repetitive in your writing piece. Next is subjective and objective paragraphs should not be mixed. Yes, being the writer, you have to be very, very clear in your head that you cannot mix one subjective piece of writing with the objective piece of writing. You have to follow one path. Either your paragraph, either your text, or either your topic on which you are writing has to be subjective or objective. Never mix the subjective concept with the objective concept because it will confuse your reader. And that is not the aim of any effective communication, be it written or be it oral. Now, next is explain things in the order in which they happen. Yes, be it a chronological order or um, vice versa or otherwise. Always remember that the paragraphs are evolved or uh, they are written in one structure. You have to evolve it. You have to write it. You have to weave it in one proper structure. Never write in tidbit chunks. So that reader is not able to understand first to explain something else. And in the second statement, you have explained something else. There should be perfect order in which you have evolved your paragraph. Like we start digits, we start counting in a sequence. One, two, three, four. 
we don't mess up with the sequence of the we don't mess up with the sequence of the digits in the same way when you write any paragraph never mess up with the sequence of that writing now last but not the least this is very very basic and mandatory grammar spelling and punctuation in written communication you need to understand whichever language you are writing you have to have one correct perfect grammatical structure including no spelling errors because it will give a bad impression on the reader's mind because uh, spelling mistakes and wrong uh, grammar structure gives a very very bad impression to the reader because they uh, lose the interest of reading that text so always follow this rule whenever you are proofreading your text go through it well uh, see check your all the sentences it has to follow perfect grammar rules uh, check your spellings and check the punctuation because uh, uh like in uh, spoken communication when we speak we always uh, give attention to our uh, pitch we always give attention to our tone uh, how we are rhythm so in the same way when we write certain we need to understand there has to be perfect tone and that can be uh, derived and that can be achieved only when we have a proper punctuation in any written form of piece so moving on to the last segment of this session now tip for effective writing so you uh, all the students you can take uh, this tip for effective writing and not just uh, uh, precisely for paragraph writing for any kind of effective writing be it a lengthier piece shorter piece or any paragraph any text report technical writing effective written communication simplifies complex concepts and ideas always remember just because uh, you want to give a very very good impression to a reader never go over the board in the uh, context of using too many words using too many difficult words using too many uh, to just give this impression that you are well read in english or you are well read in in that particular language you are using lot many difficult words never because it is the responsibility of the writer and also the basic purpose of communication that you have to convey the message well if you will go very very difficult in the uh, term of content in the term of uh, the kinds of words you have used in terms of the sentence structures you have uh, made in the piece of writing it will create lot of complexity so effective written communication is all about how much simpler you can write those difficult concepts even so this was a tip if you want to achieve that thing of effective written communication always write in simpler manner and even if you have to write on some any kind of complicated or complex topic then to you have to simplify it because the main purpose of any kind of effective communication you have to convey that message and that message will only be conveyed if you have drafted it well in a very simpler manner so thank you so much for connecting with me in this session on effective writing uh, effective paragraph writing how you can generate cohesive and effective paragraph their types and methods so see you all soon with in the next session take care